Welcome everybody. My name is Karen. I'm like, oh, which camera am I looking at? My name is Karen and I'm going to be your facilitator today. And Maya's our stage manager and she'll be coming on camera in a minute or two um, after she gets everybody nice and admitted into our social today. I'm coming to you a little bit outside of San Francisco. It's a beautiful day here and I finally actually get to wear something with sleeves though. I still have like biker shorts on. So <laughs> actually it's a onesie, but I'll leave it button because it starts to slide when I move around a little bit. Um, so today we're gonna be making a Moroccan chicken pumpkin stew. If you have not joined me before, you know that I normally um, substitute out the meat. Last month I did do the chicken um, sausage, but this time I am gonna be using tofu. So I will be honest, I have not broken down a pumpkin before in, on a camera, um, but I, uh, well, let's just hope I don't cut my finger off. Let's, let's be honest about it. And I will say, um, I am so excited that you were all here. I am a little apprehensive about the recipes. Uh, I am an at-home cook and I don't choose these. And this one to me with the apples and the cranberries and stuff is not really my jam. So I'm hoping, really hoping that I'm just gonna absolutely be like, wow, this is amazing. And so we're just gonna go ahead and get into it. So because I'm not using chicken, I'm gonna go ahead and start draining my tofu. And I don't know if you noticed or not um, that in the picture they had rice. So I'm gonna go ahead and get some rice going in the cooker and then we'll start breaking down the pumpkin, which is the part that I'm the most nervous about. All right, so I have a nice little tofu press. If you are unfamiliar with tofu, you do wanna press the liquid content out of it and that's what makes it brown. And so I'm gonna do that. I am using an extra firm tofu. And the reason I'm using extra firm is I want it to hold its shape when I'm pan frying it. And in addition to that, because it is firm and not extra firm, it will take the juices of the sauce a little bit better. Can you hear the motorcycle going by right now? Oh man, we, hopefully we are on a very quiet street. I just hope Amazon doesn't come and deliver during this time period and Snickers go crazy. <laughs> you never know. That's okay. Everybody likes to see a Snickers appearance. <laughs> he, I started prepping for um, a soup challenge I'm going to do this week. And so he is so full of vegetables. I'm a little nervous to give him anything else today. So ultimately what this is, is like basically a big colander and in the colander, I just drain it off and I'm pressing. If you are someone who wants to try tofu, but you don't know if you like it or not, you can totally do this with um, towels and like a cast iron skillet, just something heavy to be able to take the pressure off or get the water off. And my little tofu press has been used so much sliding out a little bit. So I got my little bands. Then I just clasp these in and then I start draining. It looks like whey off of the cheese. I have chosen to use some basmati rice. It is a, I am using a brown rice here. Any rice would do. I just thought since this is going to be a stew that the long grain makes me think of like a curry. And this is the type of rice that you would get in a curry. So I'm going to throw this in the Instapot. I'm going to put one cup in, a little pinch of salt, and two cups water. And then I'm going to seal it up and let it go. That's the nicest thing about making rice in the Instapot. It does all the work for you, and you don't have to monitor it or have anything boil over on you. Because I've never had that happen, obviously. So one cup of rice goes into the Instapot, two cups of water. Hopefully you guys can still see me. My screen on my phone is frozen, so I'm having to look at my computer. Nope, you're still good. And we can That's see it. you on both. Yeah, we can see you on both screens, so you're Perfect. good. Then I am grabbing my salt cellar. If you do not have one of these, so amazing. It's so easy to just put your hands in and pinch it. And I'm using kosher salt because I'm a huge Alton Brown fan. Um, kind of like Rachel Ray, they're the ones who taught me how to cook. 
And so he always recommended using kosher versus table salt. So you can see it is a thicker um, grain. But I also am gonna be using some finishing salt today too. Um, and I will be using some fleur de sel. And you don't use this with your cooking, you use it as finishing. It's what you're gonna find on top of like a salted caramel or something like that. Okay, so here's the grand task for the day. I watched a video of a chef breaking it down. I'm not gonna lie. The only pumpkin I've ever used is out of a can. Um, yeah, I, I'm not a huge fan. When I was in um, New Zealand, living there, they did a lot of savory cooking with pumpkins as well uh, versus sweet. And I wasn't a huge fan. So I guess that's probably why I haven't. But I got just a big potato peeler. I got a wide one. Actually, this has held up pretty well. When I was living in New Zealand, I went to like a cooking gadget show. I think I paid $10 for this guy and it's been a decade and it's still holding strong. So I guess that's a pretty good deal. So I'm just peeling this guy like a potato. And then I'm going to cut them in half, pull out the innards, just like if I was carving a pumpkin. And then I'm going to chop it up into chunks. This is super exciting stuff, guys. I know you're did, really did you um did you look for like is because I know there's different kinds of pumpkin? Did you like did so, it have like a name on like I don't know what kind of pumpkin? Um, you want like a pumpkin pie pumpkin. You don't want a jack-o'-lantern pumpkin. Um, and I'll tell you a story about why. Um, I am from Texas and I went to school in San Marcos. And while I was in school, um, there was a river that ran through the town, which was why I went to school there because who doesn't love wearing their bathing suit underneath their clothes and then coming out of your class and laying by the river, right? I remember my mom driving me by that school and she's like, this is where you're gonna go to school when you grow up. And I'm all like, yeah, I think that decision is a good one. So, but because it was on a river, we had a lot of flash floods and it meant, and I mean fast flash floods. One time I went to go teach an aqua aerobics class and I drove there with no issue. And within that hour, the lights were coming over the top of like the water was coming over the tops of my lights. So, I mean, we're talking fast. I couldn't get back to my dorm. I had to like go to my boyfriend's house at night, but during that time period, it was Halloween. And so there were all the pumpkin patches and such out. And pumpkins like to float. If you did not know that, they like to float. So all these pumpkins just started floating, floating away from the pumpkin patches. And being a poor college student, we decided we would drive around and collect them and make pumpkin pie. Let's just say that was the worst pumpkin pie. It doesn't have a lot of flavor, it's big. So the reason that you have those is for carving, not for cooking. I think there's several different kinds of cooking pumpkins. I got the pie one because that's what Sprouts had this morning. I guess I'm making pretty good work of this, right? Just trying to get all the little bumpies off. And now I'm gonna cut this guy open. That's the part I'm a little worried about because you know, it's gonna be tough getting it in. So, oh, this is way easier to cut than a jack-o'-lantern, I will say. Or a butternut squash for that matter. But if you are not a fan of pumpkin, I think sweet potato or butternut squash would be a really good alternative in this recipe as well. I know in Saunders Club, someone was saying that they were gonna use sweet potato. And I was like, yeah, I'd probably like sweet potato better. So here we are. It smells just like Halloween in my house right now. So I'm gonna pull out the seeds. Um, you know what, I think I'm gonna save my seeds and throw them in a colander so that I can roast those guys up a little bit later. So let me grab a colander. I don't know, does anyone else save their, their pumpkin seeds when they're carving pumpkins and such? Yep, to we, we usually do ours, yeah. We'll roast them up. And then I, um, sometimes I eat them, sometimes I don't, and get I just give them to the squirrels. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, that's a good idea, right? Yeah, the, the squirrels like them. We have lots of squirrels. I like them. I like to have, um, there's a lot of different spice ones that you can put on top of it. Except for I just, I know this is sacrilege, but I just got a seed on my Silk and Saunders journal and it left a mark. <sighs> Breaking up with perfect. That's okay. It just shows you were using it. Right? Yeah, I don't know about anybody else, but I usually do my habit trackers and such. Like I review everything in the morning with my coffee. And a lot of times my journal has little spots of coffee or tea on it. But yeah, that's the way it is. If you're using it, sometimes it gets a little messy. I love when I see when the kids have gotten a hold of the parents' journals. It cracks me up every time. The parents may not find it as funny as I do. It is pretty stringy inside. I'll cut that off um, when I start sectioning it a little bit more. I'm glad Stacy likes to do it too. I don't like using a spoon and getting my seeds out. Jenny, I am definitely fine. I am a tactile person. I don't have sensory issues. So I very much enjoy getting my hands into it. That may be just me. Oh, grapefruit spoon. That's a good idea, Stacy. I have one, but now I'm all in it. Do you remember when you were like a kid and I don't know about you, but we had like a haunted house or like a fall festival at my elementary school and they would have you like stick your hands into like brains and stuff. And it was really like frozen grapes or something like that. That's the sensory experience I'm getting right now from this is like, oh, I put my hand in brains. Okay, good enough. Let me rinse my hands real quick. All right, time to tackle these guys a little bit better. I remember freaking out in the haunted house as a kid and the teacher had to come in and get me. But I was also the child who was terrified for months after watching ET. I had night terrors for forever. So I was obviously a very sensitive child. So I'm gonna half this guy. And I, you can tell at the top, I'm gonna be a little bit wasteful that I didn't peel it all the way down, but my husband's out of town. So it's just me. So I don't feel like I wanted to go to that much trouble. So I'm just going to slice that part off. Throw my compost bin. I saw the funniest video though, when thinking of pumpkins and jack-o'-lanterns that people with chickens, does anybody have chickens at home? Um, that they, if you start carving a pumpkin and then the chickens will peck it and then they'll kind of eat it and it'll make like an interesting jack-o'-lantern face. So I wish I had some chickens who could carve oh. a jack-o'-lantern. For me. I'll have to tell my sister she has chickens. So see if she can get the chickens to do strange things. Right? I think that's just so fun. I saw it on a TikTok, I think. So you see, I'm just running my knife along the side and getting that extra fibers off. One thing that was sad when I was living in New Zealand is that I because they do not do sweet pumpkin, like they don't make pumpkin pie, everything they use is savory. Um, there's no pumpkin spice lattes. And I was so sad about that. I know it's very basic of me, but I was sad. And then I also like at Christmas time, I love a cranberry bliss bar and they didn't have those either. Not very many Starbucks. There was one in like downtown Auckland that I could walk to, but I didn't go very often. Their coffee shops are way better than Starbucks 99% of the time, except for when you want something sugary. Any other pumpkin spice fans? Yes, I am definitely, definitely a pumpkin spice fan. I usually try to get only one a year, but I don't know, for whatever reason this year I've had my fair bear share for sure. I try to get the shorts so at least is not a total sugar rush. And I ask them just to do a little half pump because being so sh like, you know, the shorts are like this big. Um, if they do a full pump in there, you're gonna be on a sugar high. Oh, the caramel apple latte, that sounds good. But I think they came out with some sort of caramel apple thing going on right now. I should have. Grab the bowl and put all this pumpkin in.
thought I had everything I needed. Yeah, I think they had like an oat one. I will say, um, I went to Sprouts, like I said today, to pick up my ingredients and they had a pumpkin spice oat milk creamer. And I made myself a pumpkin spice latte with it today. And I'll say it was pretty good. Is, is it taste just like the one at Starbucks? No, because it's oat milk, but it was pretty good. Oh, Sharon says she likes to do pumpkin spice and pureed oat to pancakes. Yum. I love those. Okay, so far so good. I haven't cut my finger open, so I'm, you know, there's no one to take me. I'd have to take an Uber if I had to go to the hospital. I did. I, know. I was going to say, I can't, I can't help you. I can call 911 for you, but. <laughs> I have had to go and get my finger um, glued before. I was cutting jalapenos. When um, I worked at the health club, I had a staff of during um, the fall of about 20 people and I wanted to show my appreciation. And so I always try to make a gift for them. And, you know, I've tried different things through the years. Like I made homemade vanilla for them and things like that. But the one that stuck out the most is I would make a jalapeno hot sauce. And it was very inexpensive because it's white vinegar, jalapenos, onion, garlic, and that's in some salt. So, you know, you can make a lot. And then I buy the little bottles on Amazon. But I was slicing the jalapenos long ways like they said and the pepper rolled and I sliced my finger open and had to get it and apparently when you slice your finger open they have to get you in really fast because of all the nerve endings so like I got moved to the front of the line at the ER so let's not do that today I don't want to have to uber the ER though I have in the past all right we're halfway there I was going to say, yes, let's avoid the, the ER drama. <laughs> I don't know. Can you take your phone? Like we can move this Saunder social to the, we'd have to the move ER it to the ER. Like <laughs> then, it, then it becomes a medical drama. <laughs> we don't want that. We don't want that. We don't want that. We do not want that. All right. Halfway done. How's everybody else doing on their pumpkins? Is everybody else breaking down? Did anybody else find pumpkin already cut up at the grocery stores that they could use? I was tempted to try to find some. I saw a cantaloupe and I was like, ooh, is that cut up pumpkin? And then I looked at those cantaloupe and I was like, oh man. Yeah, that would that would definitely not taste the same. I don't think you want cantaloupe. Yeah, I don't think I want to do that. Come up. Put some muscles into it. All right. Oh, there's more seeds, another seed on my journal. It's all good. Oh, slimy, okay, got it, got it. I just dropped it again on it. Okay, seed is gone. See, we're as protective about our journals as you guys are. Everybody's probably hands deep in pumpkin right now if they're cooking. While I'm thinking about it, I'm gonna drain the water off my tofu. See, that was a lot of water. That was a lot more water than I would have thought. Yeah, they hold a lot and that's why you gotta press it. I mean, it's, it's just not gonna crisp up if you don't ultimately. And I don't know, I want my, I don't get brown bits like I do in chicken. And that was my favorite part as a kid is like getting the brown bits of chicken off the cast iron skillet. So I do my best to at least crisp up my tofu. I'm surprised Snickers has not run over when he hears me cutting. He must be full from all the other veggies. Yeah, but I do. Um, it's a free challenge. I'm not doing it like with everybody this time because I was traveling last week and, um, but it's like a soup a day. And since it's just me at home right now, I decided that I would just like make a soup and eat it for two days and then another soup for two days. And so to make life easier on myself, I did like chop up the zucchini and cauliflower and such so that it's easy and ready to saute when I'm ready to make it. I'm not always that organized, guys. It's because I'm home alone.
go. Come on. Come on. The cutting board's starting to get a little slick. Maya, are you in Denver? Yes. Well, technically I'm in Aurora, but which is a suburb of Denver. So yes. So I was in your part of the world last weekend. I would say, were you here for the annual beer festival? I was there for the great annual beer festival. Yeah, I was looking, we were downtown, but not for the beer festival. But I was like, I wonder if I'll see Karen walking around here. But um, yeah, it, it brought um, 40,000 people were in attendance. It's, it's yeah, quite, we quite the big to, deal. We went to the noon tasting, but apparently there was a tasting starting at 8 a.m. Yep. You could drink that much beer at 8 a.m. Maybe it's people who were up all night. I'm not sure. <laughs> Though I will say um, I love a sour beer and most of the sours by the time we got there were gone. So oh, wow. I guess most of those people in the early did it. Okay. I don't like to waste things, but this is way more than I'm ever going to eat by myself. So I'm going to compost it. I'm composting it. If there were chickens, I'd give it to them, but there's no chickens in the, in the city. 40,000 people for the Great American Bear Festival, huh? Yep. Yep. It wasn't what I was expecting. I was expecting award winners and it was basically just a bunch of um, breweries who were willing to give away their beer. Yep. Um, yeah, I mean, and then it, was, I, it was good. There were some I did pour out. There were some Pilsners that I wasn't a fan of. Yeah. Did you get the um, pretzel necklace that they wear? Um, <laughs> yes. Um, my So I went with my husband's business, ex-business partner. I'm going to start chopping and breaking down an onion. And they're from the area. He lives in um, San Francisco now, but... His mom made pretzel lace for us and it had Slim Jims, Trail Mix, Ritz crackers, um, and like another little snack pack all around. And I swear it made me so happy. I know such a ridiculous thing to make you that happy, but I was like, this is the best thing ever. I have a necklace full of food. <laughs> There were yeah, some people that had full size pretzels on theirs. Oh yeah, yeah. And handy that's... snacks. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, it was fun. That was the that's best part. The... Yeah, I was gonna say that's the funniest part about driving around downtown. I'm always like, oh, it must be great beer festival because everybody's running around with necklaces of. Oh, I was one of those people. Yep. It was good. I was very glad to have it with all that beer, even at well, one that's... ounce stores, and I did not try to hit every brewery by any means. But yeah, you definitely want some food. And I also got some um, queso covered pork rinds, which yes, I know are not vegetarian, but they were also delicious with the beer. I would say though, um, what was I? I was gonna say something about the beer. The, the, oh, I think that it's ingenious to make the necklaces and that if I was taking a kid on a hike, I would make a necklace like that. And so as you know, because when you start hiking with kids after about 10 minutes, all of a sudden they're hungry. So they could walk and munch their pretzels. So it was definitely. Yep, definitely. Well, and, and they, so they were saying that it brought in $15.2 million to the city. So it's a big. Uh, it's oh, I spent a ton of money. I spent a ton of money. <laughs> I went yep. to a tiki bar that just opened um, that was dressed up like Halloween. I spent a lot of time there. We went to a really pretty, and I'm going to say this very slowly because I'm not saying topless, a tapas place, tapas. That, which I thought was going to be Spanish, but it was more Mediterranean. It was okay. It was pretty good. Um, I went to that diner that I had a $25 pot pie. Um, it's like an elevated one. It's near the stadium. I forget what the name of it was. And then I went to a breakfast place that we had to wait over an hour to get into called syrup. Oh yeah. That's a very popular one. It was okay too. I, I would say that none of the food was 
it, like, oh my God, this is the most amazing food I've ever had. Now I was in San Diego two weeks ago um, for an EDM concert and that food, man, that food was good. It didn't matter if it was a hole in the wall taco place or what, all of it was delicious. Yeah, the, down, the food downtown is pretty good, but honestly, um, living out here in Aurora, we have some of the best ethnic food. We have a new Korean place that just opened up down the street, and my husband went and got some stuff from them last weekend that was really, really good. We've got a lot, a lot of really nice ethnic restaurants. Uh, that When we lived in the city, I lived in the inner sunset for a while, and they had the most, like, it was traveling around the world when you went mm-hmm. to the, and I love that. Um, and I also really love ethnic food because a lot of it has way more variety for vegetarians. True. Very true. Unless it's Korean barbecue, however. Well, yeah, the Korean barbecue probably wouldn't be very helpful for you. I saw some dude try to do a Korean barbecue vegan on like, um, a food competition on food network. And I think he won. So maybe there is a way to do it. Maybe there is a way to do it. Are you putting the whole onion in there? Are you chopping the whole onion up? I am going to put the whole onion in. Okay. And the reason I am is because there's so many sweet elements to this dish. Mm. I want a lot of onion to balance this. So I'm not a big fan of sweet. That onion is strong. Oh, and I'm throwing this all in at the same time. Am I? No, I am not. So I need to put my, I need to put my onion separate. Yes. Because the onion and the garlic and all the spices and stuff are going in together. So I'm going to grab another bowl. So are you going to cook the tofu? Because it the way the instructions are is season the diced chicken with salt and pepper and then do the chicken and then remove the chicken. So I go, okay, so that's different. Um, and then it says add the rest of the olive oil to the pan, add the sliced onion, minced garlic, ginger, turmeric, uh, coriander, cinnamon, and cayenne pepper. So you're going to cook the tofu tofu last? After I do all of my prep, I'm going to do the tofu. And then as that's going, I'll start sauteing. So I'll do it kind of simultaneously. Um, Just because if I'm going to be over there, it makes sense. So my thing is I love a pastry scraper for cutting and taking and scooping vegetables. If anybody doesn't do that, definitely worth like the price of admission. And you can get them at the dollar store. So... They're also, if you have kids and you're trying to teach them some basic knife skills, this is sharp enough to like have them cut like a cucumber or something like that or bananas and things like that. So it's a good way to get the kids involved in the kitchen without having to worry about their hands getting cut. All right. Two cloves of garlic. Remember, if I wasn't on camera, I would be using the frozen stuff that's in little ice cubes already. I'm not going to cheat when I'm with you guys. How many people are cooking versus just hanging out? Listen to my stories about pumpkin pies that are kind of basically (laughs) stolen. (laughs) And you can totally just hang out. Yep. Stuff is hanging out. Oh, Evangeline. That way you get to see what I do. Yep. Yep. No, you can totally just hang out. You do not have to cook at the same time. I think... I think it's a good idea sometimes too. You can watch and then get ideas like, oh, I need to make sure that I do this first or, oh, I'm going to look for pre-cut pumpkin <laughs> at the store. Oh my God. Most people are literally just hanging out. I, I, is Angela the only one who's cooking with me today? I love it. Apparently they enjoy our crazy stories about pretzel necklaces. Pretzel necklaces. Yep. Um, yeah, I did San Diego for that music festival and we drove, we road tripped up through, uh, cause I'm, you know, in Northern California, we went through and we drove to Santa Barbara the first night. So it was, it was a long day. We did the coast and it was really pretty. And I did not know about this website and it's not cheap. Like I, I don't know like where camping is like where you guys are from, but in California, you have to book out like six months in advance. And so you can never get a spot to go camping. So it's called hip camp. And it's basically like an Airbnb. And so we literally camped out 
on a hill overlooking the water on someone's property. And we were the only ones there. So it was really cool. And they had a flushing toilet that you can walk down to and such as well. It was $90, which is more expensive than what you would want to spend camping. But we were able to book it out less than a week out. And we didn't have anybody else around us. And so that part was really nice. So if you're in a bind and they have some that have like yurts and such too, or some glamping, if you're in a bind and you don't want to buy a hotel room or it's a beautiful weekend or something like that, check out that website, Hip Camp. We're going to actually, um, locally about an hour away, we're going to do another one for Christmas. We're going to hang, we're going to camp out at Christmas and there's like a hot tub and such on the property. And I can take my dog and has a fenced yard that the dog can just run free in. Oh, nice. Oh, you love your projector, Cynthia? Oh, I love mine too. It's changed my meditation habit for sure. It's like all of a sudden it makes it feel super calm. Um, if you were with me last time, I went to one of the Grand Canyon spas, not Grand Canyon, Canyon Ranch spas in Vegas. And they had this really amazing wave room. And you just basically laid on a lounger, like a chaise, and looked up and they had like a dish of water with a projector over it and a light. And so you're just watching the waves. And for under $20 on Amazon, you can get one. And I love it. And you can put it on a timer. So I'll usually do a meditation. I have like one of those um, headband um, earphones and I'll put it on. And I will watch it doing a calm meditation. And then I leave it going while I read and wind down for bed. And it's turned out to be a really nice, nice, nice nightly ritual for myself. So nice. And I, it really does calm me. 20 bucks well spent. Okay. So what I got left is the ginger. If you haven't been with me before on this, I keep it in the freezer. Number one, uh, it's easier to grate and you don't have to peel it. Number two is uh, it doesn't go back. Like, you know, if you buy one at the store and it's this big, you're not going to get through all of it. So I got my bag of ginger and I'm just taking out a hunk and then I'm using my microplane. I'm going to microplane the sucker and we are going for just a tablespoon. If you do use this trick, it makes the most beautiful snow-like substance, but be aware it is not like it's airy. So you need more than what it looks like. Does that make sense? Like great more than like a tablespoon because it'll melt down into smaller pieces. I'm trying to see if y'all can see. Do you see what I mean? It's like super light and fluffy. Oh, so yeah. it's gonna melt. So you need to do more than a tablespoon because it's gonna melt down in about a minute. Yeah, I, what was the other thing I got? Um, after, after that spa trip, I bought a tiny little fountain for $20 on Amazon and I have it on my kitchen table. And when I have my coffee in the morning, I listen to the daily ritual. And so I'll just kind of like, relax with my coffee and my journal and the daily ritual in the morning. And I thought my husband would think it was really cheesy and hate it, but you have no idea how many times I've come and seen that he's turned it on himself. <laughs> so I think he enjoys, it has these cute little led lights that kind of light it up. It's three tiers. I can show you guys after we cook. I mean, it's literally a $20 fountain, but sometimes it's like those little upgrades or make all the difference in the quality of your life. Candles, fresh flowers. I'm a big um, fan of those types of things to make your house a home. I don't know if anyone else had kind of an icky week. Um, I did. I, I'm not a week. I had a day. And I, I don't know why it was an icky day. It wasn't like anything bad happened. But I was just in one of those moods, you know. And um, I'm glad that wasn't my finger. <laughs> And um, yeah, we're like, I do not want to call an ambulance. I don't know your address. <laughs> um, oh yeah, that would be a problem too, wouldn't it? <laughs> uh, but I did do, I went to Target because, you know, as you do when you don't feel great and you need a little retail therapy. 
So I picked up a candle and I picked up some flowers and I spent some time arranging them. And this target is right across from like the bay and it's actually really pretty. And so I went and I sat by the water and I did a like three minute meditation on the call map. And then I did feel a lot better after doing that and um, arranging the flowers. I used to hate flowers. I thought they were too much work, but now I understand a lot better. Now you can see right along the edges here, this is the brown, that's the skin. I can just separate it super easy like that. And therefore I didn't have to peel it. So it may be a little more, but like I said, I'm trying to cancel out some of the sweet, so I actually like this. Pastry scraper comes again, very useful. This is going in the compost. Okay, up next is that apple we gotta cut up and peel. I wish I had um, one of those spiralizer ones that are super awesome. I don't know if y'all know what I'm talking about. Like, does anybody make, I, I think someone talked about applesauce, making applesauce. It's like you mount it and then you yeah. like crank it and then it takes the peel off. And it's also super fun to use with kids. You can tell I was a school teacher, right? Yep, All the things I use with kids. <laughs> She's all like, kids love this. Oh, Jenny's saying that she makes apple pie with those. And Robin has one. I love those. I mean, they're not super expensive. And I think you can even get them at like um, Harbor Freight super cheap. I, oh, think that's probably, I, yeah. I think that's where I bought one for um, when I was doing summer camps. And we'd make applesauce in the crock pot. And, you know, that way the kids didn't ever have to get near anything super hot. So they got to help peel the apples and then I would have them cut up the apples using a pastry scraper and then, you know, have the kids come up and measure out the ingredients because the camp counselors didn't know the difference between a tablespoon and a teaspoon. So I had to watch that. <laughs> Otherwise it was inedible. Yeah. So you can get into trouble with that. Totally. I don't know. Does anybody else have a separate cutting board that they cut their fruit on so it doesn't pick up the flavors of the onion and garlic? I mean, it doesn't matter for this, but I actually do because I remember my um, goddaughters were over at my house years ago and I cut an apple on a cutting board that even though I'd washed it, I cut I mean, on. She told me it was too spicy to eat. <laughs> so cute. What kind of apple are you using? What kind of, what kind of apple is it? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I was just curious because I'm wondering, it probably makes a difference, I'm guessing. Baking apples, definitely. Um, you want to bake like with Granny Smith. And if you're an apple lover plus, um, tell us in it what, what type you like. I looked in the recipe and it did not say a specific mm -hmm. type. So I just went with one that wasn't a Granny Smith. Um, We'll see. I think for sauteing, it's not as big a deal as it is when it's baking. And so I'm quartering this guy up and then I'm going to just cut at the diagonal to cut out that core. Try not to be super wasteful on it, but I do want all that core gone. Oh, Angela's using a honey crisp. She's like, because that's what I have. I like honey crisp as well, but I wasn't sure. I'm like, I don't know, would you want like a sweet apple? I guess it depends on what you want it to taste like. Would you want more of a sweet apple or more of a meaty apple this is a tart one which i think i'm actually gonna like better yeah they're super sweet if you're wondering what i'm doing i'm looking to see when i add the apple if i can throw it in the same bowl or not let's see I didn't memorize that recipe today, guys. Sorry. There, there's a lot, but there's a lot of, let's see. So the app, where is the apple coming? I'm trying to go through here really quick and read. I read through it like three times and apparently that wasn't enough. Oh, no, the apple comes in later. The apple comes with when you put the chicken back in the pot and put in the chicken stock, cube, pumpkin, apple, cranberries, honey, and lemon juice. So it does not go in with the sliced onion, minced garlic, ginger turmeric coriander blah, blah, blah. okay yep so one last thing that i need to do oh also if you use a microplane you use it for and i actually sliced my garlic today i'm not sure why i just did um 
this, if it dries, especially the garlic, is really hard to get off. So always run it underneath your sink. The reason I know is because my husband does the dishes. And so <laughs> I, get in, I get in trouble for that. Do you, do you get in trouble for um, leaving the leaving the uh, microplano dirty? Oh, yeah. See, you have to understand, my husband is an electrical, was originally an electrical engineer. He is a very type A personality. And I was an early childhood teacher, which means that you're not a type A personality. You can't be with little kids with early childhood. So um, yeah, we're, we're an interesting team. This year in July will be 20 years together. How long have you been married, no, Maya? I saw, I remember our anniversary post not too long ago. Yeah, that was uh, 20, 21st anniversary was in, was on September 21st. Awesome. Okay, so I'm going to cut this. I'm going to slice it down and then I'm going to chop it into like thirds. I am the world's worst at cutting tofu for whatever reason. I always cut it uneven. So let's see how well I do this time. So far, so good. Total concentration. It doesn't have to be perfect, Karen. I know, but when <laughs> I want it to be close to even, so it browns. Browns evenly, yeah. Okay. Now I'm gonna go into thirds. Eyeballing it the best I can. There's this Thai soup that um, we get from Purple Carrot occasionally, and it has tofu that's pan fried in it, and it's like a coconut milk curry with like the mushrooms on top. And it was this week with lemongrass. Oh, it's so good! I hope this is nearly as good as that. Okay, I'm gonna have to move you guys with me so that I can move myself over. So taking you with me, but remember it's frozen, so I gotta move the computer too so I can see you guys. It's funny that it's frozen because it's, I mean, we can see just fine with the, with the phone. Okay. Moving the Instapot. I got my paper towels on my plate ready so I can put my tofu after it's crisp so that it drains the oil, just like if you were frying fish. Moving the computer over so I can move everything so that you guys can see what it is undoing, but you can't see right now. Can you, oh, you can see my pot now, right? Yep, yep, we can see it. Hmm. Trying to get, well, we'll get it started over here. So I'll move it over. So I'm gonna use a little avocado oil just because it has a high smoke point on this. Give a couple of swigs around. I'm gonna turn this guy on. I'm on gas, so it gets super hot, super fast. So I don't put mine above a three, otherwise I end up burning crap. Yeah, try not, try not to burn anything. Of course, we wouldn't necessarily know. You wouldn't have to tell well, us. I mean, you would see, you would yeah. see, but no. <laughs> All right, pastry scraper one more time to get the tofu in. I'm like, Oh, thank you. Those are the flowers, Jenny. Those are the flowers I picked up at Target that um, I arranged. I took I took a couple of classes in the last few months on online floral arranging. I'd like to say I recommend the company I went through, and the classes themselves were awesome because they sent you the flowers and everything. But their customer service was horrible, so I can't mm. I can't say that I hundred percent recommend them. And that's sad because I had such a good time at two different classes with them. Trying not to crowd too much. I'm also gonna hit these with a little salt and pepper. Snickers perking his head off. He's like, what's going on? He's like, wait, <laughs> I'm awake now. He's all like, you're gonna drop a cube of tofu and I'm gonna be ready for it. Cause he knows every time. He likes tofu, I don't know. Mm. All right. So let these guys start crisping up. Starting to see a little, 
I'm moving this because I don't want to catch it on fire. That is also something you don't want to do in a, you know, online social. Yeah, no. And I'm going to move this guy back here and I'm going to start getting it going. Can you see the, the big pot in the back? I can see like part of it. Let's see if I can get y'all a better angle. Scoot further back, maybe. There we go. All right. Okay, so I'm getting the oil heated up here. And so we're going to be adding all the onion, garlic, ginger, and all of the spices. Now, if you've been with me before, you know I don't tolerate spices very well. So I'm leaving the cayenne out for myself. Yeah, that seems a little spicy. It is. <laughs> maybe a little much. I might add like some chipotle or something after I taste it, or maybe some like smoked paprika. But since my husband's not here, I y'all don't want to hear me have another problem with it. All right, got my spices, got my spoon. Um, I do want to say that I am going to be microplaning my cinnamon, and I'm also going to be breaking down my coriander seeds with a mortal and pestle. So I'm going to work on doing that before I add everything in. And the reason is just because my spice cabinet is already full and I didn't want to add to it because there's no place to put it. Oh, Angela's dog's coming running for the apple. Yeah, he's more of a carrot kind of guy. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. More on pestle. Nothing too extraordinary. I do like this one better than what I had in the past because it is textured in the bottom, which makes it easier to break everything down. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, it really is. And it looks like I have just enough left. And what is this that you're grinding? Um, coriander. Coriander. No, um, I have it when I bought a bunch of spices for Indian cooking. And so, yeah, that's why I have it. And that's why it's like in a little tiny package. But I do really like buying my spices in smaller containers if it's something you don't use on the regular because they do lose um, over time their... Um, potency they become less and less flavorful so oh, you yeah. want to go through your spices pretty regularly and before the holidays is a pretty good time to do that so i'm just breaking it down using my muscles my pilates muscles <laughs> it's it's I a started, workout and a cooking social <laughs> this last week i started teaching a um matt pilates class um and it's all except for maybe three people seniors. So it's super fun. Okay, giving these guys a toss. I like to get color on all the edges. That's why um, when I drop one, Snickers comes running. Now I'm gonna do the cinnamon with the microplane. Also use it for, I, keep, I don't buy ground nutmeg. I always microplane my nutmeg as well. And you probably already know if you're here that um, nutmeg is a really nice addition to add to um, greens, any kind of greens you're cooking. Oh. Yeah. I oh, did not know that. Got my microplane, I'm going right in. This may take a minute to get a whole teaspoon. Still going. <laughs> oh, and Liz says, um, Liz likes to add nutmeg to any cheese dish also. Ooh, yeah, it is really good mac and cheese, right? I haven't used any other cheese dishes, but I could think like a frittata or something like that that has it in there would be really good. And I do have a big thing of turmeric because we do make um, curries in our Instapot pretty often and they're delicious. If you have not, if you like Indian food and you don't have any place around you, that's pretty good. And not only that, but sometimes it can be really expensive. Um, 
the Instapot cuts your time down amazingly. So when you are making a curry, because you're pressure cooking, so all of, you don't have to slow cook forever. Okay, time to throw everything in. This is my ginger, garlic, and onions. I already have the oil in the. No, I don't have the oil in the pot. I had it in the other pot, so I'll add it in the pot right now. I'll move that ball in a second. I'm sure it's obstructing your view. Nope, you're good. All right. So we just want this to go to, we're blooming the spices when we add heat to them. It does make them a little more fragrant and kind of revitalizes them. You do see this technique a lot in Indian cooking. Like you'll see mustard seeds being popped and such before that they start using to make the curry. Yeah. So, yeah, so that's what we're doing here. We're gonna give those two or three minutes. separate my tofu out. And you can see I'm getting some pretty decent color on these already. I'm checking to see, oh, the cheese dish is the last comment. Turn the heat up on that. So I'm gonna do this a little bit different than you're gonna do with chicken because I don't want to lose the crispiness of my tofu. So I'm not gonna stick it into the soup until the very end. But after these guys go for a few minutes, if you are using chicken, you're adding that chicken back in. This is looking really dry, so I'm just going to add a little more oil because, right, oil's good. It's not going to hurt your body. You need fat to make things taste good. And it doesn't say to do this, but I'm going to go ahead and season this with salt and pepper now as well because you want to season in layers. You don't want to season all at the end. I'm going to hit that tofu one more time since I flipped it a couple of times. And we were checking out the blog earlier, right? That this came from, right, Maya? Yeah, I looked it up because it has at the very bottom, it says inspired by and image from babaganoush.org. And so I went on to that and it's like a recipe blog that has all kinds of different stuff on there. And they, they said that they're like supposed to be kid friendly and a lot of appetizers, right? Yeah, uh, fam family friendly recipes and amazing appetizers for easy entertaining. That's Easy entertainment. That's definitely the way I like to entertain. My favorite way to entertain is buy a bottle of wine and a DoorDash. Yeah. Well, you know, we all have different ways. <laughs> when I lived in Austin, we had a really big house because you know it was before Austin was expensive, and you know I live in the Bay Area, so everything's expensive. But we had a big house, and we used to do a ton of entertaining. And I had like entertaining dash dishes and I would do like wine pairing dinners. And I remember like buying shot glasses for, for a pea soup taster shooter to go with the Viennier wine that, you know, like, I mean, I was that person, but I don't have space to do that now. Yeah. Plus I would be, I was, I, I guess maybe there is a little type A in me because like I had a friend who brought his friends and this was a new year's party and he wasn't telling me he was going to bring up. And number one, I was annoyed because I had all my appetizers and such pre portioned. And number two, he brought his own wine and I was horrified that it would not pair with anything else. <laughs> yeah, that would be a problem. This is me at 24. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to be adding the chicken stock. I'm using veggie stock the pumpkin, apple, can cranberries, honey, and oil. I'm gonna get to let these go just a little bit longer. My tofu is looking pretty good. Just checking, giving it a toss gently to try to brown as many of the sides as I can without literally 
doing this while y'all watch me on camera, which is what I would do for dinner. <laughs> now, now I can't stop. All right, turning the sky off. I'm gonna add the three cups of water into my pan. I'm gonna bring the water over. And the reason I'm using water instead of chicken broth is because I'm gonna use a concentrate. So I'm gonna add the concentrate. I buy this, and the reason I do is I used to listen to that podcast, American's Test Kitchen, and they said this is exactly the same stuff that you're buying. It's just already watered down, and so this is way cheaper. You keep it in the fridge, and it doesn't take up space. So it's basically a tablespoon per cup, or a teaspoon, sorry. It would be really salty if I did a tablespoon. That would be embarrassing if I did that after talking trash about my camp counselors that couldn't do it. <laughs> That would be karma, wouldn't it? Yeah, I don't, don't do that. All right. Give it a little swish, getting the rest off that spoon. Going to throw the pumpkins and apples in. And so that you guys have a better view, I'm going to turn this burner off and move it over to the bigger burner. Throwing in the pumpkin. So far, it smells pretty good. I'm not gonna lie. Here comes the apples. Already have the cranberries pre measured, so I'm gonna dump those in. Um, love sprouts for dried fruit and nuts and such, so that you can buy the amount you need instead of like having a huge thing. But I did buy a little extra and I'm thinking I'm gonna use some of those cranberries in um, a chia pudding later this week. Oh, that's right? a good idea. Have a little sweetness, make sure I use everything. Then I just need to slice my lemon and add my honey. I'm really gonna miss my husband after this one because I've made a big mess. <laughs> now you're gonna have to clean it up yourself. <laughs> that's no fun. I know. I already had to clean to get you guys on the camera to begin with. Though I have to admit, because he's been gone, I've like eaten out or gotten like a takeout from Whole Foods or whatever. So the kitchen wasn't that dirty. Squeezing that lemon in. I love lemon, so I'm going for it. Oh, and I never did put my tofu. I'm just, whatever. It's fine. It'll be a little greasy. It's fine. <laughs> There's no grease from meat, so my tofu can be a little greasy with avocado oil. And then we got to add the honey. Now, obviously, if you did not know, honey is not vegan. So this is not going to be a vegan dish. I am not even 100% vegetarian, so that doesn't bother me. But if you wanted to make sure you knew that for somebody else that was coming for dinner or something along those lines. I'm going to give, because this is... Um, it's a little chilly here today. You can see this is not a runny honey. It's a creamed honey at this point. Um, I'm, it, I'm not going to need to add oil to slide it out of my spoon. If it was a runny honey, I would coat this with oil or a little pan and then it would slide out easier. But this is a creamed honey. And in New Zealand, almost all honey is creamed, including Manuka, which is supposed to have all those amazing health benefits. I couldn't find but like one runny honey when I lived there. And I thought that was like such a weird cultural difference. <laughs> that is, because I think when most of us think of honey, we think of the, the runny kind. Yeah. And the most interesting part is that you have to, you cannot take that honey, the Manuka honey, in the plane to Australia if you're going from one place to the next. They want oh, to wow. Really? Yeah. There's, in New Zealand, there's literally a show where they, like, if you have dirty hiking boots, 
they don't let you bring those hiking boots in. They have a show about people bringing in produce and such. It's like border patrol or something. And it's like a really big show because there's no snakes. Um, that's why it's nice to berry pick there. Um, they don't have rats. They don't have any of these things. And so they don't want, and then they don't want something else getting into the ecosystem and destroying some of the things, but it is kind of humorous to see like this, like big drama around, they snuck in an apple. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to give this a good, I already have it. It's a good stir. I'm going to bring this to a boil and then we're going to simmer it until it is ultimately soft with the pumpkin. My pumpkin is rather hearty, so it may take a little longer than 15 minutes. If you cut yours in a little more delicate of pieces, you may not have. Now, last month we created a um, apple fall sangria and we gave some non-alcohol um related suggestions that you could use with it as well. I know that a lot of you guys are constantly looking for ways to increase your water intake. So I thought I would show you how I do my water infusions um, while this is cooking, how I make my tea lattes and um, a really beautiful drink that's super easy. That would be great for a brunch or for someone who's pregnant or doesn't have alcohol, um, doesn't drink alcohol um, for the holidays. So. I'm going to bring you guys with me one more time to my cutting board. Okay, you can see me. Oh, if I almost, almost lost you. Almost lost Don't you. Almost dropped you. Don't okay. drop us on the floor. Okay, so if you're on TikTok, you know all the things about fridge organization. I picked this guy up not too long ago, and it has a spout. And so I can infuse my water. It fits perfectly in the top, can, top part of my fridge. You can screw these guys off. It just has two little um, washers and then it washes super easy. And I wanted plastic, not glass. Um, I prefer glass, but there wasn't an option with the spout that didn't leak. Mm -hmm. So today I'm gonna do just a fast cucumber mint infusion. So. I try to do this about once a couple of times a week. And I literally plan my groceries too, to include whatever it is that I want to infuse. Um, I did cucumber and orange earlier. If you have a Costco membership and it's the holidays and you see those vanilla beans on sale, that is amazing. I try to look for vanilla beans, but Sprouts didn't have any. You use an orange and then you just slice down the middle of the vanilla bean to release the flavors and add it in. And it is phenomenal. It tastes oh. like orange pickle. And so I'm totally, and so I'm going to be throwing in my mint just full because it's going to get strained anyway. And it, I got this today, but it looks like some of it did get in the water. So some of it is a little brown, but I'm not too fussy about it. I'm not going to put the brown in. I guess that means no mojitos later, however, because I'm running short on mint. I wasn't really <laughs> going to make mojitos, but you know, if my husband was home, he might make a mojito for me. So I can put this in. I have a nice little container. I can close it up. It's easy enough with the spout that kids can do it, can get to help themselves to it. And it just makes drinking water a little more fun. And you could pretty much use any awesome combination to make some infused water. Okay, I'm gonna show you how it is that I do my latte next. And I don't know if you call it just a tea latte or what, but I love a good Earl Grey London Fog, but today I'm gonna use a herbal tea and I'm actually gonna show you uh, my little contraption I use to foam my milk. And I will be using pistachio milk which is a plant-based milk. It's actually really good. Okay, I'm trying to see if you can see me. Kind of. What's yep. in the, kind of, kind of. Okay, so I'm gonna put my kettle on and I will say, I don't know what it is. Fellow it is beautiful for pour overs. And one nice thing about it, it's ridiculously expensive. I'm not gonna lie, it's like a $200 kettle, but my husband gave it to me for Christmas last year and I use it multiple times every single day. So 
it really improves the quality of my pour overs as well as my tea because I can set the temperature of it. So I, it's not just a boiling water. I can hit it to the temperature that the tea is supposed to see that. I say that's what I thought was kind of the selling point of it is you can set the temp and then you can, it'll hold that temperature for a while instead of just boiling the water. And then you have to kind of guess when it's at the right temperature for the tea. So we, our stew is officially boiling now. So I'm going to turn it down to a simmer. So I am a huge fan. I'm trying to get it where I can, you can see me on both cameras. Okay. Uh, I am a huge fan. Last year, I decided that I wanted to do something nice for myself. And I love advent calendars. And I found an herbal tea advent calendar at a company that is a Canadian company called David's Teas. And they are really awesome. And they have beautiful, like if you love matcha, they have an advent for that. If you like caffeinated teas, they have an advent. If you want teas that are a little rare and you want to pay an extra 20 bucks, they got that too. And they're really beautiful. And the nice thing is, is it's a nice way to indulge during the holidays to treat yourself without extra calories or caffeine or the things that you're not supposed to be having. So I actually started becoming a, where they send you different teas once a um, quarter. So this one that I'm going to use today in honor of it is pumpkin creme brulee. And I've been a tea drinker my whole life. My family did not drink coffee. And so I had been searching for the perfect tea container for loose tea. And I love this one so much because, you know, the ones that are like a little claw, sometimes the tea gets stuck around the edges and you have to knock it out and such. This one, you just pour it in and then screw the top on. It goes right through the dishwasher without any issues. And because it is a latte, I am putting in more tea than I would normally use for a tea because you want it to be a more concentrated flavor. I'm also gonna be using less water. And I'm already, my um, tea kettle's already up to 154 degrees and I'm taking it up to 95, no, 200, 200, that would be Celsius. I was yeah, going to say, I'm like, <laughs> that doesn't seem like a very hot tea. I'm like, okay. if it came from Canada, make sure you're looking Celsius versus Fahrenheit. I know for sure. Okay. Now in the land of New Zealand, everybody drinks flat whites. And if you're an Australian, you know that there is always a debate about who invented a flat white. Is it, um, was it the New Zealanders who claim it or was it the Australians who also claim it? but they have these awesome little contraptions that is kind of like what you use um, in the science class. It has a little frother in the bottom of it. And then I'll show you the base too. I use this probably daily at this point between making a latte for myself, like the pumpkin spice or whatever. It has a nice little base. It just sits right into it. Now, I know a lot of people like those frothers, like they're on TikTok all the time. They're like 10 bucks or something on Amazon, but those don't heat. The nice thing about this one is you can either stir. If you like, if I'm making an ice matcha, I can literally just stir the matcha in and have it froth it. Now I can also make this heat the milk. So it's just a really nice, tool and I've even used it for like making hot chocolate to like blend it up and make it you know if you're using a powder so I'm gonna pour over and I just these mugs make me so happy my husband thought it was ridiculous but I love them they're for those bloom teas the flowers that you drop in that open by the way they do not look anything like they do in their photos they look like roach <laughs> in your latte they always kind of, every time I see them, even though they kind of sort of are supposed to look pretty, I'm always like, it looks like a bug or something that's it in there. Totally I don't. Looks like a bug. So I'm going to let this guy steep and then I'm going to go grab my pistachio milk and I'm going to show you how well it thumps. I'm turning my, my simmer didn't simmer quite as much as I wanted it to. So I'm turning it up a little bit. Um, Okay, so I started, I just tried by chance a pistachio milk with my Imperfect um, because it was really cheap. And I was like, oh, well, that sounds interesting because I looked it up to see if it foams or not. I know a lot of people who don't tolerate dairy 
or or vegan or or maybe they're like me with acid reflux and that the dairy just doesn't do great things for their body um they use oat milk well there's a couple of things that i know about oat milk number one it doesn't foam as beautifully as this and number two there isn't an unorganic version that I'm aware of of oat milk. So I'm going to be using a pistachio milk. And so it is literally just like almond milk is made from pistachios. I have made my own plant-based milks before and you strain them with a nut bag, but it's a lot of work. And I'm sorry. Yes. Does it taste better? Yes. But am I going to sit there and have to wash out the bag and everything for just a couple of days? No. So I don't. So I'm going to put this guy on. And then when I set it into the base, it's going to spin just like if you one of those beaker things in a lab. And I'm going to let that go. And now I turn the heat up just a tad too much. This guy's still brewing here. So this is like if you look at your water cat app or something like that, herbal tea does count for your water intake. So I consider that a win. And it definitely, uh, I'll have a cup of coffee in the morning, but this allows me to do a little more you know, like something. And it's also, I don't know, it was in the daily ritual a couple of days ago that Maya was talking about like the ritual of making tea. And I think that's why I enjoy using loose leaf versus a tea bag is I do like the ritual of going to my special box, picking out a special tea, putting it in, getting the frother out and everything. It feels elegant. It feels elevated. It feels special. And so I really, I really like that. And this guy's still frothing. You can probably hear it. But yeah, I use this guy all the time. I've had it for almost 10 years. So it's a Capresso, a Capresso. But everybody in New Zealand has one of these in their homes. Like they're sold everywhere because that's the way you could achieve a fake flat white without an espresso machine. So once this guy quits, I'm gonna take my tea bag or my tea container out, and then I'm gonna add the froth. You're gonna see how beautiful this milk froths. I have not used this brand before. I feel like they put barista on it just because it would make it more expensive. If you work for this company, then you can tell me if that's true or not. <laughs> I feel like anything. And I post the special tea things here. I, you know what, Jenny, I can do that. I'll put it in Sandra Club right after I clean up the kitchen tonight. So, I don't know, Case. You I'm trying to get where you can get an angle. It like has tripled in size, but like, look. Let me take the tea bag out first. Look at this froth. Nice. I mean, isn't that spectacular? Look at the layer. It looks like I got it at like an actual. It's hard for you to see in the light. Like, can I put something dark behind it so you can see? I mean, there is very much two separate layers here. Oh, yeah. So good. Let's see, because we can see it pretty good. I think it's your, I think it's the phone one. The phone one? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yep. Look at that. That looks awesome. Now it's I so good. <laughs> I mean, literally five minutes, five minutes for myself. Sometimes I will do like um, a meditation when I make my tea. Is it as good as like sitting down going, mm? Probably not, but if you haven't already figured it out, I'm kind of high strung. So like sitting and meditating is not necessarily the best thing for me every day. I try to do it and wind down at night, but you know, not all the time does it work. Okay, so that's two of the three ways that I'm trying to get extra fluid or water in. And I do count this and it doesn't have caffeine, which I love and this is so good. The third one that I'm gonna do, so freaking simple and it's so elegant. Let me stick this in the fridge and I'm going to grab something out of it. Okay. So if you saw a champagne glass sitting beside the um, oven, it wasn't me pre-gaming. I had it out for this. So if you want to make a really pretty cocktail, and I didn't know these existed till the other day. Um, I found this in like one of the more expensive grocery stores, but they're pomegranate kernels that are absolutely, oh, everything's done. And you keep them in the freezer and you pull them out when you need them or you want them. So I just pour 
some little pomegranate kernels into my drink. And then this is a pomegranate dark cherry. What do you call it? Pellegrigio, so one of these. And then you just top it off. Look how pretty oh, that is. So pretty. Yeah, I mean, and then doesn't that feel like way more special than just a glass of water? And that took me 30 seconds to be able to put together. And this would be nice. beautiful to serve like at a, a baby shower or something like that. And you can mix and match your flavored waters with frozen fruit by sure. And the nice thing is if it's frozen fruit, you just pull it out when you want it and then you're good to go. I'm gonna stick these back in the freezer real quick. So that's three ways I'm celebrating beverages that are hydrating, good for you, no guilt, no sugar, nothing like that. I will say sometimes the David's tea does have a little saccharin in it. Um, I usually, stevia. I usually mm. am very sensitive to it and don't like the way it tastes, but they use such a slight amount that I didn't realize that it was until I flipped it and looked at the ingredients. Mm. But they have super creative teas. Like they had one last year that uh, was called Slay something, like Slay Bells or something. And it had un like little bitty popped popcorn kernels in the tea. And it just gave off this like little buttery flavor in it. It was just so unique. So I love it. My husband says I have too much tea, but I drink it. I do drink it. Okay. <laughs> well, as long as you're drinking it, I don't think that's right? a problem. It's not wasting money. Okay, giving this guy a little stir. Um, the pumpkin's coming along pretty well. Surprised how well it cooked down so quickly. Um, okay, I'm gonna give, I got my spoon, and give a little taste to see if I feel like it needs to have more turmeric or um, anything like that. I'm trying to get it where you can see that pot again. Nope, nope. Going the wrong way now. I'll say wrong way. There we go. There's the pot. There we go. There's the pot. Angle it a little bit too. So we got a nice little boil going. And you can see just by even using my finger now, which is, you know, it's just me. It's not quite done, but it is like coming along. You can see my little fingernail mark in that. So I'm going to give the broth a taste to see if I need to add any more seasonings. Y'all is good. <laughs> this is yummy. This and is yummy. You, and you thought you wouldn't like it. And I thought I wouldn't like it. <laughs> this, like it, it's, not, it's not sweet. Okay, let me try like a bite of the apple. Because it has that tart flavor, it's super good. Mm -hmm. The part that I'm concerned about is the cranberry. More tart than sweet. Interesting. Right. More tart than sweet. This is good. All right, let's see if I can like, find a smaller piece of pumpkin that I can actually like give a little taste to to see how far off we are from done. I'll say that pumpkin might take a while to cook. It's almost there. No? No. Hot, but almost there. <laughs> I am gonna add more black pepper since I admitted the cayenne. All right, this is why we try new things, right? We think we're not gonna like something. We think it's gonna be weird. And then it turns out it's actually really delicious. That's I would the never fun. describe it. I would say that's, that's the fun thing with cooking a lot of times is stuff that you wouldn't, uh, you wouldn't necessarily think to put together, but you do. And it's like, oh, that's actually really good. Yeah, yeah, this is actually really good. Now I don't know which drink I wanna drink. Do I want my tea or do I want my fizzy water? But look, see the foam is still holding up. 
the oat milk, it foams the top, but then it separates when you pour it in. But that oh, was yeah, the definitely that was the coming out. That was the pistachio milk that you used. Yes, pistachio milk. Angela says, I love a glass of wine while I'm cooking. Oh girl, me too. Um you can't see it, but as soon as it's over, I'm pouring myself a glass to go with mine. But I always want to make sure that I'm trying to be as inclusive to everybody because I know not everybody drinks alcohol for various reasons. And also it's good for us. Like those are things you can do during the day. Like let's say you're on a conference call and you have five minutes. Why not indulge in a beautiful tea latte? You know, you're not going to be, um, your nerves aren't going to be shot because it's not caffeinated. Um, I don't know how many calories are in the pistachio milk, but you're not using that much. So I can't imagine that it would be. So Cassandra's had me try things I never would have. Well, we want to know some of the things that you've tried, Angela, that you never thought you would have. If you don't mind me putting you on the spot. Like, what are some of the things that you think are just really amazing? I know spont spontaneity was a month that really pushed me to my limit. And it's probably been my favorite month because it did really push me. Yeah, mostly just the, the recipes. I've cooked things that... I would never have tried to cook, you know, like bok choy, I had never even heard of, but that was one of my favorite recipes. It was just like, yeah, I've loved every recipe that has come out of these. And I never would have tried any of any of these foods. So I love it. Good. I'm glad you do. I, I definitely agree. That bok choy was one of my favorites as well. I will say my husband was not pleased with the sheep pan meal. He didn't understand how a bunch of stuff on a pan was a meal. He's like, well, is there rice? Is there like, he was not amused. <laughs> yes, I have bats on my windows and then I'll show you um, my newest addition. Can you tell it's Freddie? Oh, that's funny. And then I got Jason. I'm a huge freak for horror movies, which is so funny since I was such a sensitive kid. And I even have pillowcases that um, are super cute. I'll show you after I plate. But I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna start plating this. Um, I got my rice, it's gonna be perfect. And because I wasn't sure if I was gonna like this or not, I bought the good sour cream because I knew that that could fix a lot. <laughs> So there you go. Oh, I love Etsy. I got my tea towels off Etsy. I got the bats off Etsy as well. Um, and it's such a nice company that I ordered from. I have these little mice I put on my steps and they didn't get here after 10 days. And so she sent me out some more today. And she says, if the others arrive, share them with a friend. I love when nice. it's a really good seller. Okay. So I'm gonna throw my tofu back in for just a minute to kind of heat it through, turn up the heat a little bit. I'm gonna grab the sour cream out of the fridge because you know, sour cream is good. I don't know if there's a really good plant-based version of that, honestly. stuff got the good stuff and I bet this is going to be even more delicious with chicken honestly because it's going to have those brown bits that you're going to be scraping up into the stew I did a vegan stew um a couple of weekends ago and and you like saute these mushrooms and such to like get your brown bits and such, but there wasn't enough fat in it to make it taste really good. So I ended up adding like some butter to kind of give you the mouth feel because there was like no oil, no nothing in it. And I know some people, you know, what is that magazine and the program like forks and knives or forks or something and you don't cook with oil. Mm. And, and I get like some people have to because of health conditions, but it's not something I'd want to do if I didn't have to. You can see this is like thickened up. Some of the pumpkin is actually broken down, creating more of a stew-like consistency. Like, look at that. Grab another spoon so I don't contaminate my sour cream. 
Maybe I'll make a baked potato for myself later this week. And then I guess it's time to give this guy a taste. I think I need more sour cream than that. <laughs> no, a couple of scoops, a couple of scoops. Nice, nice. All right, stick this back in and then we'll have to give it a taste. I was gonna say in the meantime, I will put up the, the QR codes um, for the survey um, that you can take about the, um, for the social or for really anything to give feedback about our socials. We definitely look at that. And um, if you have any, if there's any times, if there's any particular activities you want to do, you can let us know on those. I've got the QR code for the uh, refer a friend program that we've got right now. So it's, do you get $10? They get $10. So you can scan that. Um, and hopefully everybody's on Sonder Club. You can post pictures of your recipe and tell us what things you're putting in there if you're using chicken or if you're using something else. And then of course the ever popular um, YouTube link for the social recordings so that you can um, view these um, off asynchronously, I guess is the word I'm looking for. Yeah, Angela says it's delicious. Angela's must be done too. Yeah, it's good, it's good. I I can't believe that I'm saying that I really like it, but I really do. And then <laughs> as, we, as we close ourselves out, I'll show you my throat for this. Can you see them? So cute. The one thing I really like about throw pillows is see these are zipper ones. And so these fold down flat so they don't take up much room for storage. Oh, so I nice. Take them for the seasons without taking up storage space in the Bay Area. Well, Very I, guess, important. I guess we're done. We're done. This is good. We are. Look at that. All right, right on time. Got everything all cooked and ready to go. All right. Well, um, I think I'm doing a social next Friday. That'll be the next one. I'm also stage managing Monday. What about you, Maya? When are you on? Um, I am on tomorrow for the weekly setup. So. Oh, Jenny, the tofu is good. Yeah, it warmed through. It's kept its crisp. And see, the pistachio milk is still holding some of its foam, and it's probably been 10 minutes. Nice. So, All right. All right, well, we'll say goodbye and we'll see you guys at Sonder Club very soon. If you click it, take a picture, post it, and tag me and Maya so that we can see it. Yep. Um, yeah. Well, and I'm let so us know if you did anything different today. to it. <laughs> yeah, if you use sweet potatoes or beef or something like that, let us know. Awesome. All right. All right. Have a good one, everyone. Leaves blowing round in the autumn wind. Up and down and out and in There's yellow and red and orange and brown That fall from the trees and blanket the ground Leaves in the wind, oh how they blow Up and down, just watch them go over the roofs, around, around, dancing and twirling all over the ground. Autumn moon shines oh so bright, dancing with stars in the autumn night. Mornings are crisp, clear. The sunlight shines silver and yellow and gold. Leaves in the wind, oh how they blow. Up and down, just watch them go. Over the roofs, around, around, dancing and twirling all over the town.